Hello, I'm Professor Wool. Today we'll be discussing how to automatically identify business application connectivity needs from network traffic. Um, so to set the story, um, assume you're running the uh, network security of your organization and you've come to the conclusion that uh, you need to be more secure against uh, internal spreading of malware, let's say ransomware, uh, and to do that a common strategy is to use segmentation and to introduce east-west filtering into your data center so you want to break up your internal data center into segments and introduce filtering in between them in order to do that you need to understand the traffic flows that go through the data center so that you don't break connectivity of uh, business applications when you're making the changes the trouble is that this information is often lacking. There, is, uh, there are a few organizations that actually have good record keeping of all the network flows in their data centers. And so you have to discover this information somehow. Now the holy grail that you're trying to reach is a high level of abstraction such as what we have here in the corner. Uh, recognize that you, that you have, for instance, a payroll application in your data center and that payroll application relies on several servers that communicate with each other in a particular pattern. Uh, getting that level of information, that level of abstraction is what you're trying to achieve and that's not easy because the information that you have at your disposal is not at that level of abstraction. So where can you start your discovery process? In the past we talked about using the firewall as a source of information after all, every, every connection going from inside the data center outward uh, through the firewall has to be documented in the form of a firewall rule uh, allowing that traffic through. Uh, so if you look at this example, you'll see that there is a rule in the firewall allowing connectivity from 10.1.1.99 to this external IP address. Um, so this would be a flow from this server here out towards the tax authority. Um, so you can definitely recognize this flow and uh, document it. The trouble is that firewall rules only document traffic going through them. Typically that would be north-south traffic from inside the organization towards the outside world or vice versa. And it doesn't give you a lot of information about internal traffic going inside the data center. So how do you recognize that? Well, one thing that you can definitely do is connect a sniffer to the network and record all the traffic going through the, uh, going through the sniffer. So you'd get a voluminous pickup file uh, recording all the packets that were captured. And now you need to make sense of this. This is a lot of very granular low-level information and you need to go from this level of abstraction to what you're trying to achieve which is a higher level of abstraction. How do you go from this to that? So I'd like to suggest a few directions that can help. The first is grouping the flows into meaningful groups. How do you do that? Well, here's a few things that you could consider. One is you looking for shared IP addresses. So here in this example there is this 10.1.1.99 IP address that appears in the destination of this flow and in the source of these other flows. If these three flows all go through the same IP address, then it makes sense that they are somehow logically connected and you could group them into one application. Uh, a second thing that can assist is temporal proximity, which means that if you see a packet, let's say, in this flow, and then a few microseconds later you see another packet going from the destination here to somewhere else, then possibly these two packets are um, uh, causally connected. One caused the other to occur and that means these flows are somehow logically related to each other and you can use that information to group them as well. Once you've done the grouping and you recognize which flows are related to which other flows, then you need to give things names. After all, the people that run the payroll application don't really know the IP addresses by heart, uh, they need to see names of things. Um, so how can you get this naming information? Well, you have a few sources that you can rely on. One is deep packet inspection. You could 
use software to look inside these packets that you've captured um, and search for interesting strings in them. Typically HTTP, for instance, has many useful strings in the headers, in the structure, uh, path names, uh, resource names, and maybe the word payroll is going to pop up and you'll recognize that the traffic is for that application. A second thing that you can definitely use is DNS. You can reverse DNS lookup on all the IP addresses that you get and get at least their DNS names and from that maybe you'll figure out what these different pieces are doing. And after you've done all of this uh, technical homework, you can always go to the humans and ask them. If you give them enough clues, they'll be able to complete the picture. So for instance, you found a shared IP address that appeared multiple times. You've done DNS lookup and you've discovered that this system is actually called the HR server. So using that, you can go to the IT department and ask the people that run the HR system what the other pieces are and maybe they will tell you uh, what these things are and they'll give you the name payroll to label the whole application. The take home message here is that there are systems out there that can do these types of things, can process a pickup file and discover the business applications from it in a very automated way um, that saves you a lot of time and helps you bring the information from the very low granularity it starts with to the level of abstraction that your users and uh, uh, managers expect. Thank you for your attention.